On the 7th of April 2018, the city of Douma, Syria, was allegedly targeted by two chemical attacks. The New York Times asked Forensic Architecture to undertake spatial analysis for their report on the sites, which was published on the 24th of June 2018. Here we will explain some of the processes we employed in our analysis. But first, some context. Russian journalists, who were the first to be given access by the Syrian military, visited both sites and claimed that the attacks were staged. They claimed that the distinctive yellow chlorine canisters had been carried onto the site by rebels, rather than being dropped from airspace, which is exclusively controlled by the Syrian government. However, as we will show, the videos produced by the Russian media in fact contain powerful evidence to the contrary. Working closely with the New York Times' video investigation team, we reconstructed the two sites using all available images and videos, determined the precise dimensions of the canisters, and searched for physical traces inscribed on their surfaces. Site 1 is a rooftop balcony located next to Al Shuhada Square. This model is built in Blender, using dimensions established from satellite images and corroborated by scalable architectural details observed in ground level images. We took still images from this news report and located them within the model, taking into account focal length, scale, and rotation. We identified several features consistent with the canister having been dropped from an aerial platform. These features make it extremely unlikely that the attack was staged. The canister's first likely point of impact is here, above the balcony. These fractures are consistent with impact from above. The point of impact at the balcony floor indicates that the angle of approach was sharp, almost vertical. This suggests that the aerial platform from which the canister was dropped was slow moving or static, perhaps from a helicopter. In this image, we can see that the canister has broken through the floor. Chlorine gas, heavier than the surrounding air, would have been discharged into the room below. This video, showing the gas flowing at ground level along a street in Aleppo, was used in the New York Times video report to demonstrate its density. Among the debris on the balcony floor are pieces of shattered concrete, a wire mesh fence, and this piece of cloth. The fence was likely positioned above the balcony, either to provide shade or for drying clothes. The length of the fence indicates it could have been located here or here. We're in, a chemical control in this news report from RT, we can see another metal object. It is also visible in other videos of the site. We believe the object could be a metal harness with fins, used to guide the canister as it drops. Using the object deformation features in Blender, we can effectively untangle this object while retaining its dimensions. The size and structure of the harness is consistent with others found at chemical attack sites across Syria, including the second site we examined in Douma. The scale of the wreckage matches the scale of the canister. Transitioning between these states allows us to identify features of the harness, such as longitudinal straps, tail fins, and a wider strip of metal around the nose. In this image, we can see a pair of wheels among the debris, and in another, a second set of wheels attached to the harness. Comparing these images with others collected by Bellingcat, we can confirm that these wheels are likely used to roll munitions out of a helicopter. Comparing the dimensions of the wheels across two different sites confirms the match. The features identified in this harness are important because they show that an otherwise benign chlorine canister has been converted into a chemical bomb to be dropped from above. Next, we investigate the traces left on the canister itself. By projecting multiple images from different camera angles onto the surface of the canister, we create a navigable 3D object that can be read as a medium of inscription. We are then able to unwrap the canister to create the image seen on the right, which is a complete mapping of the canister's surface. This 3D model is published alongside the video on our website project page, so that open source investigators can use it to identify the hallmarks of chlorine gas attacks, should they occur again. The nose of the canister is discolored. This is caused by a corrosive acid created when chlorine gas reacts with the water, which condenses on the outside of the canister during rapid decompression. We can see similar discoloration on other canisters known to have been used in chlorine attacks. The nose of the canister is visibly deformed, consistent with impact damage. From a second angle, we can see further separate deformation of the canister, suggesting multiple points of impact. 
Here we see grid-shaped marks on the canister's surface, consistent with the remains of the wire mesh fence. Using an extract of the grid, we can confirm this by comparing dimensions. Even the layering of the wire mesh lattice is inscribed on the canister, with bolder impact marks on one axis and fainter markings on the other. The presence of these marks, likely the result of forceful impact, further supports the conclusion that the canister was dropped from the air. The cooling effect of rapid decompression causes condensation and even frost to form on the canister's surface. Similar examples of frosting on canisters can be seen in these images from the Bellingcat website. As it melts, this frost forms distinctive runoff patterns. The fact that the runoff patterns trace along the upper side of the canister suggests that the canister has been rotated after releasing its contents. Looking at available images, we can confirm that the position of the canister has indeed been moved and rotated between the image taken on the 9th of April and the image taken on the 8th of April. While the motive behind this interference in the crime scene is unknown, the rotation of the canister and its documentation exposes the runoff pattern, an important piece of physical evidence that the canister decompressed at this location. The earliest recording of the canister likely captures its original position. In this video, from the night of the attack, we can see a white object shining through the ceiling. The white colour is caused by a layer of frost on the nose of the canister. This process is shown in images of previous chlorine strikes from Al Jazeera. Surrounding detail within our model allows us to confirm that this is the point of impact on the balcony floor. We align the image to the model by adjusting camera positions and focal lengths. Accurately matching this image to our model establishes the original position of the canister before it has been interfered with. At the second attack site, the canister appears to have entered a bedroom through a large hole in the ceiling. Again, we model this space from available images. We reconstruct and measure the hole, which appears to be the entry point of the canister. The dimensions of this hole are approximately 160 by 70 centimeters. The area beneath the hole is littered with debris, but the canister is located on the bed. The hole in the ceiling and the location of the canister do not easily align. The angle seems too extreme for the canister to have landed on the bed, which also seems undamaged. It is very possible, therefore, that this canister has also been moved from its original position. Using similar modelling techniques to those we employed at Site 1, we highlight a number of features within the footage to support allegations that this was a chlorine attack. We create models of the canisters from still frames derived from the videos available to us. Frosting on the canister's surface, as well as on the harness, suggests that the canister has undergone rapid decompression, followed by gradual defrosting. Multiple still images aligned and projected onto the model show how the frosting recedes slowly over the course of many hours as it drains its gas. Unlike the canister in Site 1, this canister still has a nozzle attachment. This causes chlorine gas to be released more slowly and explains the persistence of the frosting on the canister. In this video, we can hear a hissing noise in the background, which suggests that the canister is decompressing whilst the cameraman is filming. By looking at a spectrogram of the audio, we can also see a distinct frequency band standing out from the background noise. This supports the conclusion that the canister is still discharging at the time of filming. The surfaces of the rooms and those of the canister have been reconstructed as mediums of inscription. Our analysis of these traces provides evidence for how the canisters were delivered, the mechanisms used to deliver them, and how they decompressed.